Hello, I'm Nicole. If you're new here, I'm making a series of videos about story structure and how to plot a fiction or nonfiction book or how to edit a manuscript and turn it into an amazing story that will captivate your readers. I'll put a link in the description to the playlist with all of those videos. Today, we are talking about inciting incidents. The inciting incident is the event that launches the main action of your story. When your inciting incident is powerful and upends the life of your protagonist, you have one of the key ingredients for a gripping and unforgettable story that your readers won't be able to put down. Today, let's look at three rules for writing an amazing inciting incident. Okay, so the first rule of writing an amazing inciting incident is that there are no rules to writing an amazing inciting incident. Not really, but I mean, this is writing, so you can always you know, bend the rules and really just think of these as guidelines. And I jotted down these rules from Robert McKee's book, Story, which I have been talking about in this series of videos quite a bit. And he has a whole chapter breaking down inciting incidents. And so these were three guidelines that he gave for what an inciting incident, you know, how to make your inciting incident really powerful. The first rule is that the inciting incident should radically upset the balance of forces in the protagonist's life. In this series of videos, I've been talking about the hero's journey and I made a previous video about the ordinary world. And after the ordinary world and the hero's journey, you would have the call to adventure, which is another name for the inciting incident. So basically this call to adventure or this inciting incident is going to upend that ordinary world of the protagonist. So it should be affecting the protagonist in a profound way. Now, this doesn't mean that it has to be a really huge inciting incident. It depends on your story. So for example, you don't necessarily need a Hollywood blockbuster level premise for your story, you know, where your hero has to turn into a superhero or, you know, a, a shark is terrorizing their town or something like that. A lot of times in short stories, an inciting incident can be more subtle. So if you think of a short story like O. Henry's The Gift of the Magi, the inciting incident there is that the husband and wife don't have enough money to buy each other Christmas presents. So that's a very small inciting incident, but for that story, it's going to upend those characters' lives on a very deep level. So you just have to think about your characters and what your inciting incident is going to be and how it's going to radically upset that person's life. And so you do want it to be something that's a little bit out of the ordinary. The second rule is that the protagonist must react to the inciting incident and feel a need to restore the balance. So it has to be the protagonist reacting to the situation. It can't be somebody else. And really, they are going to have to make a decision and kind of not be pushed into their decision either. You want them to make a, a choice of whether they are going to react or not. And sometimes not reacting can also be a reaction. But in the hero's journey story structure, you have an event after the call to adventure, which is the refusal of the call, where the character is usually conflicted over whether they are going to go on their adventure or not. So you can, and it usually does make for a really good story, if your character is a little bit conflicted, but then eventually they do accept the call to adventure. But you want to make sure that your protagonist does have a choice of options of how to respond, and they're not just getting pushed into situations throughout the story, but they are making active choices. The third rule is that the inciting incident arouses in the protagonist a conscious and or unconscious desire for that which will restore the balance, launching him or her on a quest for an object of desire against forces of antagonism. So here again we see that it is so important for your inciting incident to have a profound effect on your main character. And Robert McKee points out that you should have your character have both a conscious and an unconscious desire. And when you write your character like that, your character becomes more complex and they will have these inner battles over the course of the story that will just make the story more interesting. 
interesting. So if you think of a film like the James Bond movies, for example, usually those types of characters they don't really have unconscious desires. James Bond just wants to save the world, and usually over the course of the story you don't have James Bond having a deep character arc. But if you want your character to have a character arc, and that's usually what makes the story really memorable is when a character has a profound change over the course of the story, usually that's because they're having this inner battle where they might know, like Frodo knows that he needs to go to Mordor and destroy the ring, but he has this inner battle over the course of the story of his own desire to preserve his life and return to the Shire. So for this section, I wanted to include examples of bad inciting incidents or a book or a movie that doesn't have an inciting incident, but I couldn't think of any Hollywood movies that don't have inciting incidents. And I think that's because it's really, really necessary to your story to hook your readers. So unless you're writing a book that's just a collection of vignettes or something like that, then you really are going to want to have an inciting incident in your story. If you can think of a Hollywood movie that doesn't have an inciting incident, let me know in the comments. But there are times when you're working on an inciting incident that it's not as powerful as it could be for your story. So here are some of the errors that you could run into. So one of the errors that you can fall into is that your inciting incident is too cliche. And this can often happen because when you're writing in a certain genre, you will probably already know what your inciting incident should be. So for example, if you're writing a murder mystery, you know that the inciting incident should be that the body is found. But of course, there are so many murder mysteries written that you want to make sure that what, however your inciting incident is, that it's a little bit more unique than other murder mysteries and that it gives your protagonist a unique motivation to track down the killer. I was actually thinking about this with the film John Wick where, this might be a spoiler, he's a retired assassin and the screenwriters obviously want to get him out of retirement. So they have where his wife just died and she gave him this little puppy might be a spoiler, you might not want to watch the movie after I tell you this, but his puppy ends up getting killed and then over the course of the movie he is avenging this dog's death and obviously also it was the last gift that his wife had given him. So it gives him this unique motivation over the course of the story and you're also cheering for him to win because that was really bad that the screenwriters killed his dog in that way. The second error you can make is having the wrong inciting incident for your genre. So we are just talking about if you're writing a murder mystery, you would want to have your inciting incident be when the body is found. And I have seen this in movies, I couldn't think of any specific example, but sometimes you're watching a movie and you think it's going to be a murder mystery, but then it ends up being a romance because the inciting incident is two people meeting and falling in love. and. That might happen in a murder mystery, but then you just kind of get confused over which movie you're watching. You know, is this a love story? Is this a murder mystery? I don't know what happened. So make sure for whatever genre you're writing in, you know what inciting incident you should write into your story and you stay in that genre. The third mistake that you can make is confusing your hook with your inciting incident. So I was thinking about the movie Inception and obviously we have this really intriguing hook which is that you have these characters who are able to go into people's dreams and that is the hook of the story. But that's not the inciting incident. The inciting incident is when Saito asks Cobb if he can do this special job for him that's going to involve Inception and going into people's dreams. And so if you were writing a story and you just stayed with the hook where you're just telling us about, oh, these people are going into people's dreams and just describing that process, that might make an interesting, very short flash fiction piece or short story, but it's not going to be a really gripping novel to read. You're going to have to have an inciting incident at some point. And the fourth mistake you can make, as we just saw, is staying in that ordinary world either for all of your story or just staying there too long. So I made a video previously about the ordinary world that you can check out, but you want to make sure at some point you get to that inciting incident. And a lot of times you just need to know with your story, the genre of your story, when do inciting incidents usually happen in this genre? Sometimes a book might have 
like a prologue where the inciting incident happens right away, then we go back into the ordinary world or something like that. But I would recommend studying the genre that you're writing in and figuring out when the inciting incident should happen. And sometimes the inciting incident doesn't happen for a very long time in a story. So if you're writing an epic or something like that, you can think about with the Lord of the Rings where, you know, in the first book, it takes a very, very long time for the inciting incident to happen because Tolkien has to world build and tell us, you know, build up this universe so that we understand what is happening in the story. The fifth mistake you can make is creating an inciting incident that doesn't really matter to the protagonist. And we're kind of wondering over the protagonist's motivations. And that's why it's so important to look back at those three rules and create an inciting incident that is something that would make your character want to react to that inciting incident, something that's going to throw their world out of balance. So we're not saying they're saying, well, why does this matter to the protagonist? And so that's really important is whatever story you're writing. And so I talked about earlier about the short story, The Gift of the Magi, where these two people don't have enough money to buy each other Christmas presents. And you can probably think of characters from other stories that wouldn't have cared if they didn't have enough money to buy each other Christmas presents. So you want to make sure that with your story, whatever your inciting incident is, let us know why this is so important. And also look at the character of your protagonist and think about why does this matter so much to my protagonist? Or maybe I can make that inciting incident even bigger so it actually will affect the protagonist on a deeper level. Okay, so I just wanted to close the video with several questions that I think are really helpful for creating a powerful inciting incident for your story. What is the worst possible thing that could happen to my protagonist? How could that turn out to be the best possible thing? Or what's the best possible thing that could happen to my protagonist? How could it become the worst possible thing? So I think these questions are really helpful at getting us to dive deeper into our character and create an inciting incident that is really going to grab the attention of readers and make them want to continue reading. Another thing to keep in mind is that you're not going to have just one inciting incident in your story. So actually each of your acts, and you're probably going to have three acts, in your story and each one of those is going to have an inciting incident at the beginning. So you're going to have an inciting incident in your first act which is kind of going to be like the first domino that kicks off the story or you can think of it as a snowball rolling down a hill and it's gradually be going to become a bigger and bigger problem as the story progresses. So you can even use these questions and maybe have a positive inciting incident in your first act and then that leads to a negative inciting incident in your second act and then maybe something else positive or negative in the third act. I hope this video helped you. Be sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment letting me know if you have more tips about inciting incidents. And I'll also leave a link in the description to my email newsletter where you can sign up and get more writing resources. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic week. God bless and I wish you all the best with your writing projects.